Hey guys, another episode of Wild Lore Book. This is Jigsaw Owns with my friend Chris. Hello. This is uh, my long friend, long time friend in the game. Been friends about almost almost a decade now. Um, and uh, coming up nine years. Yeah, long time. It's amazing the friends you make on this game, guys. So, all right, today we will be going to Westfall. Ah, uh, I have found memories. When I was starting out as a PvP server, it made you learn how to dodge things. <laughs> uh, if you guys weren't here for last week's episode, we did um, we did the Hatfields and McCoys. Uh, it was a reference to the Hatfields and McCoys. We did a Where's a Reference to the Collector movie. There was a reference to Jason Voorhees. There was, uh, we did our first wanted quest and everything. <clears throat> we discovered the true horrors that lie in this game that people always overpass and always overlook. They don't pay attention of the story that's actually going on in this game. <laughs> Chris, what is your favorite, um, lore? What's your favorite lore? in the game like so far uh, as far as with Westfall I, always, I do like the Hatfields and McCoy one because I always like you know, like the American history and I like that they pay homage to that and I think it's pretty nice that they put that in the game that's and actually I, Elwyn Forrest Chris sorry to correct you but uh, Elwyn Forrest is the Hatfields and McCoy's quest line oh yeah I keep forgetting <laughs> alright here's our second one of quest guys Wanted Hogger. A huge knoll Hogger is prowling the woods in southwestern Elwyn. He has overpowered all attempts at his capture. The Stormwind Army has placed a generous bounty on the knoll to earn the reward. Bounty hunters should venture into the woods and deal with the beast. I remember this quest. This is a long, long, long nostalgic quest that has been in the game for years. It used to be a lot harder than what he is now. Well met. Marshal Dugan sent you, eh? Well, you are not from the army, but if Dugan sent you, then that's good enough for me. Our situation is to say the least, a stressed one. I hope you can give us a hand. Knowles, brutish creatures with no decent business in these lands have been seen along the borders of Elwyn's forest. A large pack of them and many more than we can handle alone have infested the woods south of the guard tower yonder. Another group has infested the areas near Stone Cairn Lake to the east. The Stormwind Army will commend whomever helps them, helps kill them. Bring me their planted knoll armbands as proof of your deed. <laughs> I noticed um, last week, uh, Chris. I don't know if you watched the last episode, but uh, last week uh, I was telling I was telling everyone that they took uh, Elwyn Forest out of the lore. Like it's not in, it's not in the lore master achievement anymore. Really? Uh, yeah, it's it. The chapters aren't in there. If you complete Elwyn Forest, you don't earn nothing now. So back in the day, back in the day, whenever I did L1 Forest, he actually had an achievement to show for it. Well, that's actually pretty cool to have the old achievement and say, hey, I did this before they took it away. Yep. <laughs> so we're killing these uh, NPCs called Knolls. Um, they're basically... What would be your best description of this, Chris? A Knoll? I was... A gnoll is kind of like a half human and a half hyena hybrid, if I, I would say so. If you had to like compare it to another series of uh, video games slash pop culture, what would you compare them to? Actually, I would compare them to uh, Conan Exiles because they have a creature that's similar to that but just taller. Really? Yeah, they call uh, they call them uh, the half humans, and they kind of look like gnolls except they have long uh, claws on their hands. 
Oh, that's cool. Yeah, at first I thought they were werewolves, but then when you skin them alive, you got hyena pelts, and I'm like, wait a second. Doesn't that look like gnolls? They gnolls? remind me. I'm like, holy crap. They remind me of the Tasmanian devil. And every time I kill him, it's like. And they're just looking at him, they kind of remind me of the Tasmanian devil. Yeah, I can see that actually, yeah. <laughs> that might be a little reference to it. I think that's what Conan got a, a, a inspiration from WoW doing that. A lot of, uh. Younger kids that are watching my channel, or a lot of younger people, probably don't even know who the Tasmanian Devil is. Yeah, funny enough, that creature is not <laughs> really a mean creature. It's no, no, no. from uh, Looney Tunes. Oh, Looney Tunes. Yeah, yeah, but the creature they based it all on the Tasmanian Devil is actually not as vicious as many people put it out to be. We just got our first BOE. Hmm. Pioneer boots. They're ugly. So. You watching the stream, Chris? Um, I would. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll turn it on, but the problem is I'll hear a double echo. You can. You can always meet that. All right. Here's Hogger. Coming up here. See if he's still hard to kill. <laughs> Level twelve. He's dead already. That would have took so long back in the day. Yeah, you actually needed a group back in the day for that. Yeah. All right, we got a note here, a Westfall deed. This is an old deed to an expanse of farmlands within Westfall. It is signed by the Theodore Furble and co-signed by his wife Verna. And on the back of the deed are hastily scrawled words. We leaned on Furbrow and got his deed. Thought it might be handy if you wanted to forge one of these for your own place. The Fur Bros. Fult, fult, the Furl Bros. That's kind of hard to say. The Fur Bros won't give us trouble. Last I saw them, they were on their way out of Westfall, stuck with a broken wagon. You think the Fur Bros might want their deed back? <laughs> I've been hearing some several complaints from a couple people uh, watching my streams. They said they're too they, the episodes are too long. They say so. I'm gonna try to cut this one short and make it 30 minutes an episode from now on. Uh, like an hour last time was, was I think it was way too long. It depends on the game. Certain <laughs> games you can actually get away with doing a whole hour, say if a game like Rust, where it, it, grinding is a lot. This one you can make shorter and it's much easier to digest for the players and stream watchers to go, okay, cool. Which sim was here? <clears throat> He's a big lord nut. Oh yeah, huge. Hail. Have you been killing gnolls? I see you've been busy. You have our thanks. Be careful. Now I gotta go back to Goldshire. I, this is this what I hate. Like, it, I hate whenever Blizzard does this thing where you gotta go one area, then you gotta go back, then you go back to the area, then you go back, then you go back to the area, then you go back. Like, what the hell? <laughs> it sucks, but but also you gotta remember, th th these are quests that are, they're almost what 13 years old. So back in the day, th that was popular style of how old MMOs on 
would uh, handle the game. You would go all the way out to one zone and come back just to hand in the old zone. Well, and back in the day, you didn't have mount. You didn't have a chauffeur chopper that I'm using right now. You, you didn't have that. Like you had to, you had to run to Goldshire or to run to Westfall before you reach level. I believe it was 40. You got your first mount. Or 30. Yeah. The, the 30 back in Wrath. No, uh, actually, 40 it, actually it, was, it was it was 40. But then the um, <laughs> mid uh, about the midpoint of the expansion, they knocked it down to 30, and then closer to the end, they knocked it down to 20. Yeah. I started when it was 30 and 60. Now it's 20 and 40. Back in the day, it was it was 40 and 60, wasn't it? Yeah, I had to wait till 40 to actually get my mount. I started a little bit sooner than you did. And I was 40 when they actually allowed you to get your first mount. And that thing was slow, but it was better than walking. He did what? Great, now we have a bloodthirsty beast right beneath the streets of Stormwind with a whole army of gnolls at his command. Definitely an improvement. I feel safer already. Here's your reward, but promise me you'll check in with the stockade guards in Stormwind at some point just to ensure that things are going smoothly. You got it, whatever. <laughs> I didn't read this lore that was going on with, uh... General Ham and Clay. I don't think it really matters. General Ham and Clay's. Wow. And Hogger goes grr. And General Ham and Clay says, "This beast leads the Riverpaw Knoll gang and may be the key to ending Knoll aggression in Elwyn. We're taking him into custody in the name of King Varian Wren." Then Hogger says, "No." And then General Ham and Clay responds. Take us to the stockades, Andrew Math. Sorry, I missed that, guys. <laughs> so I was thinking about um, throwing in. Yeah, probably probably making the shows 30 minutes long each, or at least try to aim for that, so people don't get bored with the show. I don't know. Well, at streams that can last anywhere between an hour, a couple hours, but if you want to do it, make a video, 30 minutes is actually pretty fine to do. It's easier to edit that way. Does it look good on the quality, by the way? Yeah, it looks fine. Alright, good. I'll watch that YouTube video and fix the quality and stuff. There's no stuttering, <coughs> it's not looking blurry or anything. It's fine. That's good. Welcome to Westfall. Here we go. I had a farm once. But that was a long time ago. I prefer a good battle, don't you? Oh, okay. That's stupid pet battles, guys. See, I told you last time, two episodes ago, told you that pet battles are not part of the lore. Watch your footing, rookie. Murder, rookie. That's what you're looking at on the ground in front of us. Here's the deal, kid. We've got a full-blown murder on our hands. Double homicide. Single horse, ice, uh, horse, single horse, I side, horse aside. Worse yet, we are in Westfall. I could throw a rock behind me and hit a dozen hobos with motive enough to want to wipe these people and horse out. Now, I don't know who did this. I'm, I sure don't appreciate having to come to this dump to investigate the deaths of a couple of squatters. But I'll, de I'll be damned if I don't find the perp. You want to help? Go talk to some bums the hobo knows. For the Alliance. We don't need any civil and vigilante types getting involved, kid. Leave this one to the professionals. This is useless. 
Look at the date on this letter. The Farbrols have been squatting on the Jansen stead for five years. They never could quite get their wagon fixed. I remember this quest, talking to people and get lost. I can choose between two things here. Maybe a couple of copper will loosen your tongue. That's always the right answer, but I like. Did you see who killed the fur bros? Maybe I can sell your liver for some gold. I never knew that you were killing hobos here. This was not an original quest, this was added in during the Cataclysm. Yeah. Oh, the big hero has arrived! I'm saved! Yeah, right! Two copper? Um... Uh, you got no business here, Lout! Beat it! Alright. Look at this guy. Get lost. Maybe I can sell you a liver for some gold. See? What? What? I don't get it. Why are children. Oh, okay. So once I kill one of them, the children loot them, I guess. I don't know. Oh, the big hero has arrived. I'm saved. Yeah, right. <laughs> Listen, pal, I don't want any trouble, okay? I didn't see who murdered them. But I sure heard it. Lots of yelling, human voices, you dick. Now get out of here before I change my mind about beating you up and taking your shoes. You want my foot in your f front or in your rear? Make the call. <laughs> I can't do this for straight face. <laughs> I tell you what. I tell you what. Yeah. Get lost. Now you gone and done it. Time for the fist. See, this is the quest I don't like because you have to like either pay them or ask them and get lucky. Normally paying is the is the quest. I'm not gonna read all of these obviously, so it's the same stuff over and over again. There's the second clue. <laughs> See every time I pay the copper, I, I get the clue. There we go, last clue obtained. Those are Murlocs. Horse poopy pal. Those are Murlocs didn't kill these people. I've seen what Knowles and Murlocs do to the people that they kill, and this isn't it. Too pretty, too perfect. I forgot to read all of the clues, so. Hmm. Here we go. I didn't see who killed him, bub, but I got a whiff. Smelled rich kinda like you, damn shame too. Fur bros were a fixture around here, nice people always willing to share a meal or a patch of dirt. Who killed the fur bros? I'll tell you who killed the fur bros, King Varian Wren. That's who. <laughs> and he's killing the rest of us too, one bum at a time. The only thing I can tell you is that I saw some gnolls leaving the place a few hours before the law arrived. Between you and me, the tree, the murlocs killed the fur brawls. Yep, saw them with my own two eyes. Think they'd been casing the joint for days, maybe months. They left in a hurry once they got wind of Johnny Law and the idiot brigade over there. Okay, that was all the clues. Well met. Already read this. 
Furthermore, the fur brawls have been squatting on this farm for five years. No, whoever wiped them out had a reason. This is murder. Now, see, it just... Oh, gosh. He changed position. I couldn't read it. Uh, why is he wearing rhinestone sunglasses? Furthermore, okay, this is murder. Plain and simple, we're going to get to the bottom of it. Watch your footing, rookie. I already read that. Seeing as how we have no other leads, we may as well chase down the information you got. There are a couple of river paw knoll camps in the area. Track them down and search for clues. Bring back anything that you might find. Isolate your search to the river paw knolls and scouts. Light bless you. What's this? As pointless as I think that this is going to be, we need to investigate all of our leads. I need you to head out to the longshore west of here on the coast and shake up some murlocs. Try to find a clue or some info that can help shed some light on the murders. Return to me if you get lucky, rookie. Go with honor, friend. Mm -hmm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I got some new stuff to put on. See, before, you couldn't wear plate until you reached level 40, I believe. No, 30. No, it was 40. Was it 40? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they changed everything. Like, you can wear plate right off the bat now. Well, this is perfect to prevent uh, ninja looting from people. Because back in the day, when say, I was raising my uh, hunter, and then a piece of mail drop. Uh, I would have warriors or uh, paladins stealing it, even though it's my highest type of armor. And that would suck, so that's why they're doing this sort of thing. Yeah. I forgot that you made a paladin. Yeah, my original first tomb was actually a holy paladin. This is nostalgic for me, because my first tomb was a night elf warrior. Still have him to this day. And you know him as Grandor. You know what went through my mind when I made Grand Orth? I basically, basically Lord of Rings and Zelda, kind of at the same time. Interesting. What went through your mind when you made your pally? Um, it was probably one of my favorite old animes, and that's why I named it at um, Aisha Clan because I actually liked the the show from Outlaw Star. I was like, oh, and I found out. Oh, most Japanese character names are usually not chosen. So if you try to do Gandorf or, or any of the Lord of the Rings or any other sci-fi stuff, normally they're always chosen. But the anime characters, no. Also, it's a way if you start learning the, uh, like a different language, you can name them after something and get the same name someone... <laughs> Has already right, say someone has the word darkness as their name. You can use it in a different language, and boom, you have the same name, but sounds cooler. True. What is your paladin name again? Forgot. Uh, Zenobia. Oh, Zenobia. oh, the original one. And that's Aisha from Clan. which anime? Uh, Outlaw All Star. Aisha Clan or Zenobia? Uh, Zenobia is from a different show, but uh, Outlaw uh, Aisha Clan is from Outlaw All Star. You still have her? Yep, she's uh, she's currently on the Manor Off server. <laughs> if anyone wonders why I like picking females, because if you're gonna look behind a character for thousands of hours, I better be a female's butt. True. <coughs> Can't argue there. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. I remember I came here. In this expansion, Legion, because uh, it was the last clue to getting a mount, and uh, you had the, uh, it said, sun rises in the east or something, and it falls in the west or whatever, and you had to go to Westfall to get the last clue. That's the one thing you guys need to try. Um, there's several secrets that were hidden through Legion to get mounts. There was one for a pet. Uh, I haven't done that yet. I don't know if Chris has, but, um... Three mounts. There was the Fathom Dweller. You had to go around and collect all the orbs. And that used to be the orbs. Once you click on the orb, you had to wait an hour and click on it. It wasn't It wasn't everybody could click on it at first. 
like in the beginning it, yeah in the beginning i like i wish i streamed back then because like we waited there my whole guild our whole guild waited there and for the orb and just we one person at a time would click first orb. it was, it was horrible <laughs> and he had the long forgotten hip hippogriff chris helped me get that one that's basically clicking on five crystals uh, before the person clicks on their five crystals. Um, that one is very annoying to do. Then you had the, the, the uh, mind bender. What was it? Mind? What was it? Red um, mind worm. Th uh, yeah, red mind worm. That was my favorite. That was my favorite one to do because uh, I like traveling. I like exploration, and like you have to travel. You have to travel like twelve different places. And you had to like figure out yeah. the clues where to go and stuff, and then finally you had the lucid nightmare horse. That was, that was really fun. It was truly a nightmare. The the little puzzle buying there. Buying the mask and... was horrible. I hated buying the mask just to sit in the chair. I want to know who the hell came <laughs> up with that idea. Seriously, a random a uh, random mask. Oh, we must use this mask. I hope that they have more in uh, Battle for Azeroth, though. I had fun doing those. Alright. Yeah, next time if there is one like that, we'll just wait a day or two for the price to go down so we don't, <laughs> uh, so near one of us have to pay a lot of gold. Alright, here we go. Find anything on the knolls? Is this supposed to be some kind of joke? Because I'm not laughing. Bits and pieces of red cloth, what the hell is this supposed to mean? How goes the murloc hunt? Nice find, rookie. I think I have a stack of these on my desk back at the station. We're basically back to square one. What do we know? Someone that likes to write fiction about the past sent the Furbrolls a letter? Looks like we got ourselves a real history mystery. Looks like we got ourselves a real who done it here, rookie. Unfortunately, it looks like the locals aren't willing to talk and the clues you got off the knolls and murlocs are damn near worthless. We are going to have to initiate a plan. Be on the lookout for Two-Shoed Lou. Two-Shoed Lou is an old confidential informant of mine who ironically make, makes his home at the Furball's old pumpkin farm. Head west to the farm and find out what Lou knows. If he gives you any guff, tell him that Horatio sent you. <laughs> See, to me, this is fun. Like, I was telling my viewers on the last episode, this is fun for me. Like, I'm leveling, and I'm having fun doing it. Like, talking out loud and explaining what's going on with the quest lines and stuff. And It's, it's really fun. It takes away the grind of leveling. I've been wanting to do this for a long time too. Oddly enough, uh, on, the, on that quest I was sending out, it's kind of like almost like a moth, like an ex mafia person telling uh, the current one, "You better do this, or I'll tell someone higher up that owes me a favor. That I will end you." What Horatio? What he said? Yeah, it makes me. It makes me think that it might be a reference to like a like an old mafia movie. No, uh, I think it's a it's a reference to the good, bad, and the ugly. Basically, um, the uh, I haven't seen the movie it myself, but I heard that it's about uh, some guy that uh, or some some sheriff that sends uh, some kid off and and he has to like f find criminals and stuff. I don't know. I don't really know this net reference. I'd like to figure out what it is though. Look, we ain't got no problem for no more. Horatio sent you right then, um, how can I help you? He's not here, is he? Heh, <laughs> he knows I wasn't hiding from him, right? I was just trying to lay low and all that, you know? <laughs> Listen, I really shouldn't be talking to you, but I owe Horatio a favor or two. I don't really know nothing about what happened to the fur brows, but I might be able to point you in the right direction. He hands me a large crate. That crate used to be my home before I stuck it rich. Before I struck it rich. Now I'm living the life every hobo dreams of. Right, so you take that there living crate, head to the jangle load mine, 
southwest of here, head to the back of the mine, and once they're hiding in that crate. <laughs> back before, those damn kobolds gave me a permanent limp. I used to be William Pestle's number one candle supplier. Hell, I can't. I even came up with the line, I take candle. <laughs> yeah, that was me. <laughs> Cobalt would say, you know, take candle. And I just respond, I do take candle. I then bash their brains in. Hey, Jim drifts off for a second. Good times, the best times. Now, can't even use the bathroom without assistance. You want to help me kill some kobolds? You'll find a good load of them in, in the nearby mine. I got a flight path here. <laughs> this guy's trying to whisper to me. <laughs> no, small time hustler, okay. This is the quest line right here. The thugs. This has been in since the beginning. <laughs> I believe that once you hide in this crate, it's Vanessa Van Cleef that's behind all this, I believe. Are you sure? It's been a, been a while since I've done this. This is also going to be my first human, guys, that I'm leveling. Uh, I told Chris here that I'd, I never leveled a human. So. I've been telling this guy for years to do that for a reputation. It's so much better. Well, oddly enough, that quest wasn't for Vanessa Van Cleef. Back in the day, it was for Edwin Van Cleef, who's um, yep. her her father. Brother. Uh, I thought it was her brother. No, Edwin Van Cleef is her father. See what I tell you? Want to come on your Miss Weaver? <laughs> I told you. <laughs> I called that shit. <laughs> My buddy Cake he always wants me to heal for his groups. Right. You know what's funny? A lot of people tell me that I'm a bad healer in RBGs, yet groups want me. I was like, why do you want me if, if I'm a bad healer? You know that that Peppers guy I was telling you about, right? Tried to troll, he tried to troll me in an RBG yesterday, telling me to get the left orb, and then he went and got the left orb. So I just, I just left in the middle. I was like, screw you, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not staying here. I need a target. <laughs> How many more do we need? Hmm, four more. I think after this crate quest, guys, we're going to go ahead and end the episode. So, uh, yep, we'll do a quick question, uh, a quick Q&A with Chris here before we go, though. Let's see, where do I put this crate? You not take candle. <laughs> oh They'll never leave. They have right. done that various times in WoW history. It's <laughs> funny. Hilarious. Oh, I have to be at the end of the mine to use this. Okay. Oh, okay. I know, I I think I remember what this is now. <laughs> Doesn't an ogre come and then uh, Vanessa comes? Ogres need to be in the game, by the way. What are you waiting for, Blizzard? Make them freaking playable. Is 
To be honest, I'd probably switch the Horde if they made him playable. I always wanted to play one. I tried my hand, but I just couldn't get behind it because of how many Horde I've killed. <laughs> now, did you know that uh, Edwin um, Bankley was actually once a good guy? Yes, I did. I learned that in uh, a book. Actually, there was a book I read about that. It's part of Ravenholt. Or uh, Syndicate. Uh, was it Syndicate or Raven Ravenholt? I can't remember. He was actually the, the stonemasons that helped prepare the Stormwind when the orcs had <laughs> tried to take it over at one time. What made him uh, choose to, to go to the Defy's Brotherhood, though? Like, what was the... Um, they, uh, him and the stonemasons were wanting a reward for repairing Stormwind after the attacks, and the nobles uh, said, no, we're not going to give you any money for this. <clears throat> you live here, that's payment enough. Um, and the Defy's group, who was a group of outlaws, were against Stormwind and for their past wrongs against them, and... They oh, here, here we go, here we go. Yeah. Glubtrock. Okay, Glubtrock's the first boss currently now. In a bad position for this. Oh well. What's little homie want? Why are you called Love Truck? Sad. This is the life that you had hoped for, Club Truck. Running two bit extortion operations out of a cave. Love Truck, crush you! Oh, will you? Do you dare cross that line and risk your life? You may attempt to kill me and fail, or you may take option two. What option two? You join me, and I shower wealth and power upon you. So Globetruck have two choices, die or be rich and powerful. Globetruck take choice two. I thought you'd see it my way. I will call for you when the dawning is upon us. So, yeah. Um, to me, uh, that voice interpretation of the mysterious kind of like darkness kind of voice that you like, you would get from like a Professor Snape kind of thing is, uh, that's how Van, Van Cleef would sound to me. Not Vanessa, but Edwin. So. <laughs> you know what's funny? The quest is called I Take Candle, but I don't have a damn candle to show. <laughs> <laughs> you would think. I think one of them used to reward you an actual candle off again. This is also going to lead us into the Dead Mines um, lore quest line, which is actually one of the, my favorite quest lines in the game. That and uh, Rain's Cleansing, it's no longer in the game. It was a long quest line that at the end of the quest line, you would get a Furbog stick that would transform you into a Furbog for two minutes. And I still have it on Grandor. Still have it. And there's no cooldown on it. As soon as you use it, it's an automatically, you can use it again. Whenever you want. I passed up the quest line because I'm an idiot. <laughs> All right, so we got two to turn in here. Oh, sweet justice! Killing those kobolds won't make me walk like a normal person, and it sure won't get me a job. But damn, does it feel good? He reaches into a crusty old sack. Here I think I got something for you from my cobalt hunting days. Maybe you can put it to good use. He gave me a cobalt basher, see? It's like I'm bashing some skulls in. Alright. He puts his hand to his ears and starts talking loudly. Stop, stop, stop! I don't want to hear it. I don't want to know, and I don't care. That kind of information is liable to get you killed around these parts. 
I got one more bit of information for you and then we're done. A couple of thugs recently showed up at the farm causing all kinds of trouble. I don't know where they came from or who they're working for, but I know they're bad news. I may have overheard them talking about subjects that might interest you. If you are interested, you'll find the thugs back behind the farmhouse. If you get caught or killed, I don't know you and I never seen you. Good luck, kid. <laughs> Did you? Did you meet her? Yep, she's for real. She wanted to tell you lugs that she appreciates the job that we did for her on the fur balls. Giving me a pile of gold to split with you all. See her face? Is it really? Whoa, what do we have here? Looks like we have ourselves an eavesdropper, boys. Only one thing to do with a lousy good for nothing eavesdropper. Ah! How about you die? <laughs> this is sad. This used to be hard. Well, they have the scaling, so that's why it makes it easier now these days. <laughs> Oh boy, what happened here? Oh, two showed Lou is dead. I, I didn't see nothing. He he died of natural causes. Natural causes. Two bullets in the chest and his shoes are on his head. <laughs> what kind of natural death would that be? <laughs> Doesn't look good, Ricky. Greetings. We're dealing with an organization here, Rookie. You don't just offer a, off the richest bum in Westfall. In broad daylight, leave no witnesses. Someone with a lot of power is behind these murders. What have you learned so far? So what do we know so far? We need to follow the clues. Over at the Jansen set, we found a water-soaked letter and some scraps of red cloth here at the Furlboroughs. You overheard a conversation between some shadowy figure and an ogre mage. You also get a confession to the murder from a bunch of thugs whom you then killed. Something isn't adding up, Rookie. There's an old couple southeast of here at the Saladin's farm. Head over there and speak with Farmer Saladin. Find out what he knows. Be careful. Alright, we're going to go ahead and end it here. I'm going to go ahead and go back to Goldshire. Alright, so what did we uh, learn today? Basically, Westfall is, uh, it's shrouded in mystery. We had to uncover clues of what's going on. We had, we first thought that it was the Knolls and the Murlocs behind what happened to the, I believe, Furballs? Yeah, the Furballs. Um, Furballs are apparently getting murdered one at a time. And, uh, the, I, I basically spoiled this for you guys. Because me and Chris have been playing, been playing the game for years. We know what's going on, so, yeah, obviously it's the Van Cleef family that's behind this, and the Defias Brotherhood, as you would say. Now, I believe it's called something else, though. It's not Defias Brotherhood anymore. <laughs> I don't understand why you have to fly to Stormwind and then the Goldshire, it doesn't make any sense to me. Ne never understood that. So, Chris, uh, I have a couple of questions and answers for you. Um, so, the question is, um, what do you think of the show so far? It's not bad at all. It's actually very informative, and it's good to describe the different things, so that way the person gets more ideas, like, oh, so what is this game about? And it actually might bring in people to play the game, because... Some people are very lore-loving. Tell us uh, a little bit more about what you're excited uh, about the show. Uh, like, w what parts of the show excite you so far? I like when you actually are talking about the lore and what they're referencing, because some people are like, why are they doing this in the game? 
and going through and telling people what it actually is referencing too might bring them more closer to the game. Like, like the Jason Voorhees reference in Elwyn Forest. People love that idea because some people are big Friday the Thirteenth. I'm actually a fan of it. Of that. Did you know? Did you know that the actor actually has green eyes and the NPC has green eyes? Did you ever pay attention to that? A lot of people don't pay attention to that stuff. That's why I say it. Yeah, I actually noticed that. I was like, huh. Uh, final question for today. Uh, I had to cut this short. Um, I have a question. Uh, what are you most excited for uh, for the future of this show? Um, I would say probably the first dungeon you do to see how that works out. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right, guys. This is all the time we had uh, the time for today. Um, please, everyone, thank you. Say say thank you to Chris for joining us today and in, uh, in a coffee talk while I do the show. This is Jake Saw Owns signing off. Till we meet again.